I don't know if you saw a video back in March where uh, I was very excited to go to Swindon because I got a new green um, Jazzmaster. This is a Jazzmaster of sorts. I say new, it was someone else's project. It was a 2012 Squire Jazzmaster. It had a nice neck on it and it wanted some love because it didn't look quite how I wanted it to and the pickups weren't right. I put some of my own in for that evening. They weren't quite how I wanted and I said I was going to refinish it. Body is not standard. Um, I'm going to refinish that. I'll talk about that in a second. And then you heard silence. And then I set it on fire because, well, it was locked down, I was bored, and I'm a pyromaniac. I, I did have method to my madness. It was a finishing technique and not me just burning a guitar because I disliked it. Well, I finished the um, Jazzmaster guitar, only I turned it into a Jaguar and here it is. It's got, obviously, a burnt finish. You can, you can see I've set fire to the metal Jaguar control plates and the trim plate as well. Let me just unplug this. That'll work. Um, so it's got the completely burnt look. Um, I'm really happy with how this has turned out. And in fact, I've been too busy playing this and taking it to a few rehearsals. And it's worked out really well. Um, I don't know if you can see here and that all the way round here. I've carved away massively at this to try and take some of the, the weight of the ash off. It, it's still a bit tail heavy and it's slightly heavier than I'd like, but it, it's a little bit lighter than it was. And it wasn't a particularly heavy Jazzmaster, but it's still a reasonably weighty guitar. Um, heavier than I'd like, but... It's not what I'm going to fling around like my S520. But it's fun to play nonetheless. Um, I really like it. Um, all of this grain highlighting was done with crimson coloured grain high enhancing filler, which is kind of a thick paint that sands really well. You paint it on and then you sand it off and all of the low spots are filled in. Um, I had to make this plate because the Jaguar scratch plate is a little bit shorter because the Jaguar's a short scout, 24 inches, and this is a 25 and a half inch Jazzmaster, which is a slightly different shape. But I grafted on the, the, the Jaguar chrome parts because I like the way they look. This is a Fender Japan bridge. It's really a bridge tailpiece, I guess. It's really, 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 really smooth. Um, it's got a trim arm that absolutely stays put. This is really nice. So the trim arm is from Stay Trem. They're a UK-based small company. I don't think they do a huge amount of business. Um, but their, their Jaguar Jazzmaster trim arms are really, really good. And this bridge, this, this was on the guitar when I got it, is really, really good. I cannot stress how good this bridge is. It's so much better than a... Um, inexpensive Squire um, Jazzmaster or Jaguar Bridge. I think it's better than the Fender ones that I've played in stores as well. Um, I haven't lived with one, but it's just big, big chunks of stainless steel. And every screw has a little silicon rubber grommet around it, so nothing can rattle, nothing moves. It does, I don't know if you can see on the camera, it does rock back and forth with the tram in the same way that an original one does. You can get sleeves to stop it from doing that, but it's actually really stable. That's a really smooth, nicely rocking tram. It's got the nicest through zero kind of sound of any of the trems I've played. It, it's a really fluid wobble across the zero point. Um, it 
it's not as an extreme dive as a Floyd Rose or even as a um, two-point style of bridge or even a, a, a vintage six-point um, Fender style tram. It's quite subtle, but it's really smooth. And the, the rocking bridge really enhances the smoothness of that. If you didn't have the rocking bridge, you'd, you'd hear string pings, I think. And, and that would really take away the really delicious smoothness of this. so surf rock into particularly into the amp I've got going at the moment which is uh it's a little laney curb it's running in one watt mode with not a lot of gain at the moment not got any pedals going on at the moment I've just got the laney into um a little 1x12 um I think it's an eminent screaming eagle in a Harley Benton cabinet it sounds actually pretty good it's a great thing to mic up i've just got a Terman mb75 and a superlux copy of an e906 are both inexpensive mics but they sound the part and i get good sounds out of them <laughs> just got that really surf rock sound trying to work out what to play I didn't really script this or think anything through and I don't play a huge amount of clean guitar without pedals <laughs> So getting the flanger put on in the studio, if I can manage to make that work. Um, the pickups, there's a Duncan designed and a Iron Gear, um, I think it's a Steam Hammer, which is a Dimasio Super Distortion copy that I just pulled out of, well, the parts bin, I guess, but in guitars that were running on parts bin pickups, I'm going to make some when I decide exactly what I want, and I think I want a five-way switch so I can have a bridge single coily sound, a single coil from the bridge, and the next single coil in kind of series going on for a, a wide humbucker, and two coils in parallel going on, which this should do, but I, I messed up wiring things up, so it's really thin at the moment because there are... Uh There's a phase issue, so it's um, it's chopping the bass right out. It's not quite right. Um, I just kind of put it together with pickups in a hurry because I wanted to try these rather than the ones I had kicking around in it last time, which were close but no cigar and... Certainly this Duncan designed is closer to the the sound that I, I think I want in, from a neck pickup. Um, it's quite close to the pickups that I'm winding for uh, neck pickup sounds and, and what I really had in mind. And critically, it's got the right string spacing. So 52 millimeters for this, this, this staggered design and there's not really a technical reason to do the staggered design other than if you've got pole pieces that are slightly further out, it makes them line up if you twist it. Um, if you've got it right by the bridge, you can get really twangy sounds and on the high strings and a bassier sound on the low strings. Because that works with a strap down here up here it's just an aesthetic choice i think it looks kind of cool i was kind of going for a, a bit of a nod to the uh kurt cobain jagstang look 
um, one of the design inspirations and one of the reasons that I kind of like the, the Fender Offset range. Um, there's also some kind of uh, Brian Molko fanboy going on. Um, and also a bit of Robert Smith and Cure fandom. And I just really like the look of these. And I think I said um, to a friend of mine, Tim, from Dawn of Elysium as we were watching um, Hands Off Gretel. <laughs> Scarlet in the Brudenell Club uh, that I just really, really wanted um, a Fender offset because they were the cool and weird guitars that the cool and weird people were playing when I was just getting into alternative music. I really regret not buying a uh, Fender Japan um, Kurt Cobain Jagstang from Wizard Guitars that was I think it was like three or four hundred pounds it was not a lot of money because it was just at the point where Nirvana was falling off the radar and wasn't particularly fashionable and new metal was the thing um, but I wanted to play it before I bought it and the guy at Wizard Guitars was like, no, you're not playing that one. Everyone comes in here and wants to play it. It's like, would you like me to put cash down? It's like, no, no one's playing it. Okay, well, I was going to buy a guitar from you, but I'm not going to buy a guitar from you ever. And I didn't. And the guy went bust shortly after because he was just being a rude to paying customers. Don't be rude to paying customers. And I must have spent a ridiculous amount of money at Electro Music down the road, who are always really, really, really good to me. But I'm not getting paid for anything that I'm talking about in any of these videos, by the way. But, yeah, this guitar is... I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, particularly, I can take this to, to a rehearsal, play it for two hours, and it's not going out of tune. Um... The previous owner put some inexpensive locking tuners on it. Um, they're okay. Um, it's very hit and miss. You're really rolling the dice on inexpensive locking tuners. Um, if you've got the money, buy Spurzels. I do love the Spurzels on my red guitar. They are really, really, really good. There's much less backlash in them than the, these cheap ones, but these inexpensive ones, I've got them on a couple of guitars. They're okay. You have to file out the, there's sometimes a little burr on them you've got to fire out otherwise they break strings all over the place um, they, they eat E strings quite easily so you've got to be very careful with them but they're like under £20 it's not they'll let you down on stage it's they'll annoy you when you're tuning up with this kind of tuner it's a straight pull pull it straight through clamp it up pull it up to pitch and stretch the string in and as I'm, usually as it's coming up to pitch if there's a burr on the, the, the locking tune of the string, just let's go then. And if it doesn't let go when you're tuning up, it will be fine until it rusts to pieces and it's too crusty to play. Let's talk about this some more. So, some more sounds. beef from this pickup it's, it's, it's very much um, a rock guitar it's it's not built to subtly jazz master and the cub is cranked martial sounds it does clean up nicely on the volume pot um, this doesn't have a treble bleed on the volume sometimes that's a modification I do I might talk about that later I've not put a rhythm circuit in here. Um, I do like the strangle switch kind of circuit, and I do have a chicken head knob on one of my strats that does that kind of thing. I'm just looking for parts and considering exactly what I'm going to do because what I don't want is to catch 
done knobs whilst I'm playing live and it just suddenly mess with what I'm doing. So I might do something more subtle or harder for me to screw up up here. Um, I'm not sure yet. Or just keep this plate with dummy switches in or something because it looks cool. Um, let's just go twiddle with the amp and see if I can get a bit more gang going on. <laughs> Instantly, there's that cranked, martially punk rock tone coming from this. And it's absolutely spot on. That's again absolutely dimed on my little cub. And it's, it's doing the sound. But it's backing off the volume of the game. It's got that really... Arr, kind of growly, snarly thing. I think it's the, the, the tailpiece and the, the strings behind the bridge that give it a different sound to uh, something with a a strap bridge or a, a shorter um, Gibson style stop bar. And you can play around with this, you can kind of get go. Uh, all kinds of extra squealy sounds and it was something that I did quite a lot when I had a a junior type guitar with a long tail piece. I was quite fond of that. Kind of dissonant, kind of odd. I really like that. Um, what else can I show you that it does? Um, yeah, it's absolutely spot on I mean I should be using the orange pedal and I think there is one around here somewhere but I can't be bothered to find my DS1 and set it up just to do that um instantly into the kind of sound I'm doing with the petals without me pulling petals out. Um. It's maybe lacking a bit of gain for the, the, the high gain, squealiest of squealiest stuff, but that's what pedals are for, and uh, there'll be a stack of gain pedals when I'm doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. Um, I hope you enjoyed me talking about and trying to demonstrate this kind of guitar. It's the first time I've set up a bunch of mics and tried to do my audio separately to the video. So I have some technical challenges for me to deal with. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this one. <laughs>